In a world full of too many football podcasts, comes another football podcast. One man's quest to find the answers. Okay, boys, let's go to work. Now, live from Pine Grove Studio B, it's Let Me Be Frank with T. Frank. says here I have a new video I need to look at. All right. So let's take a look. Let's go try and find it. All right. Uh, nope. Definitely not that. Hope. Uh, I don't know that you need to see my pump up music for the day. That's uh, this one. No, no, it's not this one. But that dude is pretty good looking. I mean, if I were a fan of football, especially Penn State football content, I would consider liking, subscribing, and reviewing that thing wherever you can get podcasts or, you know, YouTube. Uh, what's it called? Let me be frank. Now that is a good name for a show. If I had a show, that's what I would name my show. No, but that's not it. So let's move on. Oh, yeah, here it is. All right. I have a quarterback throwing against nobody in particular on an empty football field. Is it my birthday? I'm T. Frank. This is Let Me Be Frank. And today we're talking about Bo Prabula. Future Penn State quarterback, commit for the class of 2022. Uh, some new video of him throwing this spring that he released. Uh, we're going to get into what you can actually take away from this stuff and what we see from Bo on tape uh, in 2 minutes and 19 seconds. So we're going we're gonna to dive into that. By the way, if you listen to the show uh, on podcasts, whether Google Podcast, Spotify, any of the places that you get your podcast, this is a very video-heavy podcast segment today so i would consider finding let me be frank on youtube liking subscribing and giving a review all right let's go this is let me be frank so before we get into the video there's one last thing we should talk about and that's that this is going to be referencing some work i've already done on Bo Prabula. So if you haven't yet, I would encourage you to check out bwi.rivals.com. Blue White Illustrated, I did a film review of his 2020 football season. I gave strengths and things that he's good at and then areas that I think that he needs to develop before he gets to his senior season and before he becomes a Penn State Nittany Lion in the class of 2022 to which he's committed. So a lot of what we talk about is going to be referencing that. And if you want to know the full story, I would encourage you to go check that out. And if you haven't and you want to sign up uh, for Rivals, it's a great deal. And there's a lot of great content, not just for me, from Ryan Snyder, Nate Bauer, Dave Eckert. They do a great job. And I want to thank them for letting me use the footage today for us to talk about and get into some of the things that have happened with Bo over the last couple of months since we've seen him. Okay, so let's get into the footage. The first thing that I think we should start with is one of the areas of development that I thought was most important for him heading into his senior year and one that I thought was easily attainable, and that's arm strength and physical development. Now, when you say somebody doesn't have a strong arm, it sounds like what you're saying is they're not going to be a good quarterback, but let's remember Bo Prabula is going to be a senior in high school. There is so much room for physical development, not just now, but when he gets to college. So anything he can do now is going to enhance what happens in the future. And based on the film that we've seen, that was the first thing that I take, came away with is this kid has been working out and working out hard. Because if you look at his lower half, it looks completely different. It's a totally different shape than what it was when I saw him on film just last year during his 2020 football season. And this is really important. Because it's not just that he put on weight, it's that it, clearly he put on good weight and he put it on the right way. You can do squats, you can do lower body activities, and you can make yourself tight if you're not focused on a, you know, a wider sense of athleticism. And I think that he's done that. You can see that he's got expressive muscle development, you know, all throughout his lower body. And that's a great sign because that's where a lot of power comes from when you throw the football. So he's able to plant and drive off his back foot and use all of that new muscle to put velocity on the football. That'll also help him as an athlete in general, help him run, help him move, stop, cut, all of those things, all of that power in your explosive movement skills comes from your lower body. And that was a natural thing for him anyway. Now, based on what he's done, I'm expecting him to be much more explosive as an athlete next year. And I would expect there to be a little more arm strength 
for him in 2021. Now, there's a certain amount that does come from just your natural arm ability, and I think that that might develop as well, but for it, that's hard to tell on this tape. I'll say that. That's hard to tell based on some of these throws, you know, because it's pretty grainy. The angle's not great to see velocity on deep balls and things like that. Plus, realistically, he's not throwing against anybody. So you can't see him fit a ball into a tight window. You just see the ball go and be completed to a receiver who's running unimpeded down the field. But as far as his physical development translating into that sort of thing, I'm highly encouraged by what we've seen so far just in the two minutes that we watched him throw the football because those things are hard to do. Like, it, you remember when you were 17, 18 years old? Like, the discipline it takes to physically develop that way and to, to naturally gain this weight. That's the other thing, is it all looks like it's natural and it wasn't anything that he had to, you know, it was a forced thing where he tried too hard and his body wasn't accepting the change. It looks all natural. He moves the same way. That is huge. Because one of the biggest things about Bo Prabula is his upside. Now, I know that we're... We might at some point get into the comparison of him and Drew Alar from Ohio as the two quarterbacks in this draft class. The thing that, you know, sells, I think, people on Bo Prabula is the upside, that he is so mobile, he's so athletic, and he has this good frame to put on weight. The fact that he's done that, it's removing some of that doubt when you look at upside, because that is a two, that's a that's a double-sided coin, that's a two-edged sword of upside is unproven but hopeful potential. And the more he can remove those unproven things, the more questions he can answer, the better his profile is and the better he is as a football player. And when it comes down to it, like these are the things that he's going to need to do to be a good quarterback and to show the dedication and insane work ethic it's going to take to be a starting quarterback at the college level. Obvious development at any point when you can see it is a positive sign. So that would be the first area we start is just the fact that he's in the weight room, he's working out hard, and it's working. The second thing I want to point out, and something that we can see from film, but it's much more evident when you watch it up close, is his ability to flip his hips. And if you ever hear somebody talk about in a, in a scouting evaluation of a player, quick hips, this is it right here. I want you to look at the way he's able to change his body position from one angle to another quickly efficiently and without any clunky motion this is again it goes back to the work he's been doing in the weight room but also his natural ability uh to stay loose and to stay fluid in his hips and he's got quick feet these are all hallmarks of incredibly talented quarterbacks these are the sort of things that make you go wow when you see them happen and it all comes together again very early on there's still things that he needs to develop with but when it comes to the physical side there are fewer and fewer questions about what he can do. And I want to go back to this clip again because this is read option footwork. This is directly translatable skills to what he's going to be doing at the college level for Penn State. You see the RPO, the mesh point, the running back. Imagine a running back coming through there and faking the handoff, and then he has to quickly transition his body position, throw accurately immediately to a receiver on a seam route or a slant coming up on his left side. He's able to do that efficiently, quickly, and accurately. And that's something that was on his tape, but it's much more in your face when you get this angle to see the way his body is able to move efficiently from place to place. This is one thing that I think a lot of quarterbacks really struggle with at the college level is the, is the footwork side of it because it is so taxing and it is so difficult to do. And the, re the repetition of doing it correctly time and time again, this is something he was good at last year, but there were times where some of his short area footwork uh, he struggled with this is this looks like a major improvement in that and again he's putting it on film because it's been something he's been working on accuracy delivering the football on time to the right receiver all of those things make you a good quarterback and raise the floor of what you can do that's a great sign again that's another question that he, we can see the answer to now can he do it when there's a defensive end crashing down on him and there's something obstructing his his vision that's something that we won't get the answer to. But as far as can he do it, does his body move efficiently enough to do it, the answer is a resounding and impressive and sort of not surprising but eye-popping yes. 
Another area that I want to point out and one that I think is a strength of his is his ability to throw the ball on the run accurately. That's a hard thing to do because a lot of players think they know how to do it, but when you actually have to put in the discipline of somebody's chasing you and to keep your hips and your shoulders downfield to deliver the ball consistently with accuracy, this is something that he excels at. So there was a lot of this built into the Central York offense last year to take advantage of his athleticism and his ability to run, but it also gave him the option to throw the football if one of those options is open either underneath or deep. And you can see, based on film, that he's able to do that. And up close, you can see the mechanics of how it works, how he keeps his shoulders and his hips as square as he can while he's rolling out to his right and to his left and delivering the ball with consistent accuracy downfield. Now, I want to go into this particular clip because this is one of those wow sort of throws. The ability to throw against your momentum accurately into the middle of the field. Now, if there's a linebacker there, that's a bad decision. But the fact is, he put the ball exactly where he wanted it to. He met the receiver at the right point with the football. And again, we've seen that from him on film. It translates to the field. This is not a Johnny Manziel run around sort of thing. This is a legitimate skill. And this is one of those special things that he does that makes you just hang on. Like when, when you see the holes in his film, you see some of the gaps in what he can do because he wasn't asked to do those things or because he still is working on them. You can always go back to these special plays either outside of structure or on the move. These are things that not every quarterback can do because it's clear that it's not just scrambling. He's not just running around looking. He's looking downfield for an open receiver, and he's able to hit them on the run or get the ball within you know the catch radius. Those are things that can change the outcome of a play, and enough of those can change the outcome of a game and a season. Now, there's... Plenty of work to do, and there's a lot of stuff we won't get into as far as his ability to read coverages and his ability to make post-snap recognition plays. So there's still all of those questions to be answered. But when it comes to the things you can see from film like this, he answers them all very well. So we're going to take our last point, and we're going to split it into two different sections talking about Bo Prabula, and that's his footwork. Because in general, I think that this is a area of strength of his, outside of the RPO footwork, that is. Uh, I think that in general, he's a very good pocket quarterback. He's able to move well in the pocket, and he has good positional discipline. Now, every quarterback can get better. He is a high schooler, so there are always areas of improvement. Uh, but when we hear about quarterbacks talking about the little things, being consistent on every play, all of those kind of coach-speak answers... We're going to show you what that means. We're going to show you the specifics of what they're talking about because, like I said, in general, this is a strength of his, but there are areas that I think he could improve upon to make himself a better quarterback and I think are reasonable small changes that he can make. Now, let's start with the positive because I think that one of the things he does best is he keeps balance at almost all times. And what that means is he's ready to throw the football at any point in his drop back. So we'll watch this clip here of Prabula running a play action fake and then delivering the football. What he's doing here is on his back foot drop, his last step in his drop, he's coming out of that. And you notice how quick his hips were getting around, how awesome that is, how, how that immediately positions him to be ready to throw the football. But a lot of guys, especially athletic quarterbacks, will overstride that. They'll, they'll put their foot too far back so then they don't have that natural platform to drive from and throw with consistent, deliverable mechanics that mean accuracy. He does a great job of this. Like It doesn't matter if it's the RPO footwork. It doesn't matter if it's the play-action footwork. It doesn't matter if it's just a straight drop back. He's, for the most part, always on balance, and he's always ready to throw the football. That is huge. That means that the the bulk of the work he's doing correctly, the bulk of what he is doing at the quarterback position when it comes to drills, when it comes to fundamentals and footwork, he's doing it correctly, and it's it's repeatable. And in general, as we talked about, I think his accuracy is good on film. I think he's a generally accurate football player. That is, Again, we talk about his ceiling, but his floor, if he's able to raise his physical abilities to the point of having a college arm, his floor is very high. The mobility, the accuracy, all of those things, the coolness under pressure, 
all of those things raise your floor as much as they raise his ceiling. And to me, this is the bedrock of that. That is what is going to save him. That's what's going to put him in whatever quarterback competition he has in the future is his ability to consistently deliver the ball accurately. Now let's get into the other half of it because there are some general things that I think he can work on. Now, this is going to get a little mundane. This is going to get a little boring in the sense of like this is how the position is played, but it's very minute details. So in general, the way that you want to throw the football is you want to drive off your back foot and the front foot, as you can watch here, you want to plant it and point it to where you want the football to go. A lot of young quarterbacks, they point the football, they point their brain at where the receiver is, not where he's going. That's how you lead a receiver. That's how you throw with anticipation. You want to throw where the football is supposed to go, not where you see the receiver right now. That's that's a tough thing to learn, but when you learn it, it, it just opens up a whole new world of quarterback play. And again, in general, I think Prabula is good at this, especially when he has to focus on it, when he has to turn to his left and throw and open his hips and point his foot that way. I think he's very good at that. The problem is throwing to the right's a little too easy for him. So sometimes I think he gets a little lax with where he's planting that front foot. He doesn't have to think about extending, opening up his hits, and driving with the football. So there are times where if you notice when the ball is high, his foot is not pointed in this specific exact direction. Now, it's close enough that he still gets the ball on the frame of the receiver, but if you want to talk about supreme levels of accuracy, you want to talk about the stuff that makes guys exceptional, Doing this repeatedly correctly, that's the next step for him. And again, that's an advanced level thing. That is not a, I'm a high school quarterback learning to play the position and I've got upside. That's a guy who has college level accuracy. If he gets to that point by his senior season, you're going to see a drastic improvement in his statistical output, in wins, all of those things. Everything that you want to see from a quarterback, He's again, he's got all of those things consistency is the next step for him. And the advantage to point this stuff out is really impressive for a guy who is only going into a senior season. So that is the one area. Again, it's an area of development, but it's an area of positive development because I think, first off, it's attainable. And secondly, I think it's something he's going to be able to get because he's gotten a lot of it so far. And, and to me, when we talk about the the quarterback competition that hasn't even happened yet between him and Alar. These are the reasons you cannot rule out Bo Prabula because the things that he does well, the things that are exceptional about him are truly very good and also translatable to the college football field. Now everyone wants to talk about size and arm strength and, and ceiling and upside and all of those things. And Prabula has a lot of that stuff. But what he does also have to me is the fundamental bedrock of what makes a good quarterback a good quarterback. Now, again, there's still a lot of questions to be answered about how he does all of this stuff under pressure in a college situation running advanced concepts. So that's one area where he hasn't done as much work on the football field. There's not as much evidence of that. Again, it doesn't mean that uh, he can't do it. It means that we have not seen it yet. So with all of these tools that he's developing in the offseason and what we've seen in just the two minutes and 19 seconds here, I think you can be really encouraged about what Bo Prabula is doing and his progression from his junior to his senior season in high school. This is Let Me Be Frank. <laughs> so I'll, I'll be real with you. I, I'm a little surprised myself that we got as much out of this as we did, seeing as it's a high school quarterback throwing on a football field with no defenders whatsoever, not even seven on seven. But it does give an insight, and I, I, I'm glad that we have it because it gives an up-close view of the things that make a quarterback good or things that a quarterback needs to do to be good and why he's putting that on tape and why those things are there. So hopefully you learn something about either Bo Prabula or about quarterbacks or about my ability to talk incessantly. Any of those things. If you learn something today, that's kind of what I was going for. Uh, so again, I want to thank Ryan Snyder, Blue White Illustrated, for letting me use the video to uh, give you an insight into what Bo Prabula has been up to this offseason. And again, if you want to subscribe or if you want to check them out, bwi.rivals.com. Do an awesome job. And you can pick up a uh, magazine, Blue White Illustrated, 
anywhere uh, in town that you get those. I pick mine up at the grocery store, which reminds me I am hungry. So I'm going to go get some food.